Thursday, April 7th, 2022, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at how the Federal Reserve is about to face the music. And of course, that's my opinion. And after that, we're going to look at uh, some very interesting books that I'm going to recommend about the Federal Reserve. Of course, a, a lot of you have probably uh, heard about these books, have read these books, but as we always get new viewers, new subscribers, we have to keep uh, informing the public uh, about that. And of course, at the end of the uh, report, we will look at where the markets are this morning. So yesterday, uh, the minutes or the beige book, I'm not sure which one, but it doesn't really matter, of the previous uh, FOMC meeting, the Federal Open Market Committee meeting of the Federal Reserve came out. And it showed that the uh, FOMC is looking to announce uh, a sale, a monthly sale of the securities in its balance sheet in May, in its next meeting in May, and that they're going to do it uh, in tranches of $95 billion every month. And uh, yes, the bond markets for the last few days have been dropping quite sharply. Interest rates or yields have been rising. But the Federal Reserve is uh, behind the curve. <laughs> uh, they uh, were saying that uh, inflation was transitory just over a year ago or they were even saying that they wanted high inflation, but now they've realized that they, they've lost control of the public's uh, perception of things. Uh, prices are rising very quickly, so <laughs> they've decided to unwind their huge balance sheet, which is, uh, I think, top just under $9 trillion. Just to give you some perspective, Back before the 08 crisis, that balance sheet was uh, around 800 billion. So it's gone up more than 10 times. And, and that's why I think the Fed is going to face the music. And <laughs> yes, it's been one of my objectives to expose the Federal Reserve. I have my end the Fed mug which of course, I, I, I might have to think about getting a new one. <laughs> I think it's about four years old, but yeah, it, it's one of the best sellers in my Teespring store. Uh, the other thing about the Federal Reserve is that it's uh, anathema to, to freedom, to human freedom, to free markets. Uh, and why is that? Well, if you look at the, uh, the 10 planks of the Communist Manifesto, one of them, number five, is centralization of credit in the hands of the state by means of a national bank with state capital and an exclusive monopoly. And that's what we've got in the, in the Federal Reserve. And that's what we've got in the Bank of England and the ECB. Yes, they are controlled by private interests. And in the case of the Federal Reserve, the regional banks are owned by the private banks within those districts. But I would say that the banking interest and the state have become one. And uh, in a free market, you need competition. The state is not supposed to favor any part of the economy, any sector, and any group of people. It's supposed to be... Uh, a level playing field. And is it any wonder that we are where we are, where we have a uh, huge wealth inequality, where a, a tiny uh, fraction of the population controls the majority of the wealth? No, it, it's no surprise. And, and it's because of the Federal Reserve. And now I'm gonna jump into why exactly I, I think the Fed could be shoot, shooting uh, itself in the foot. And by that, I'm going to go back, back uh, do a little bit of regression analysis, go back to the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. 
I think that was a result of um, J.P. Morgan, <laughs> uh, really, yeah, J.P. Morgan. Uh, Wall Street was tired of uh, the, the crises that they had to manage, and, and J.P. Morgan uh, was the bank that always orchestrated uh, bailouts. Uh, I, I think it was the 1907 crash. J.P. Morgan had to assemble all, all of Wall Street in his private residence, bail everyone out. So they had to find, uh, uh, of course, a way to keep the banking scam going, but not put themselves at risk. So they came up with the Federal Reserve Act, which uh, at the time, the excuse uh, for the act was that it would provide a flexible currency to the United States. In my opinion, the objective of the Federal Reserve Act was actually to make sure that the public bailed out Wall Street whenever they had problems under the guise of keeping a flexible currency. Yes, there were a, a few politicians like Charles Lindbergh Sr. and others who saw through this, but uh, they, they, they were a minority and, and uh, the power of Wall Street in, in the press uh, got got the Federal Reserve Act through. <laughs> they put it through uh, just before Christmas Eve when most uh, of uh, the senators and Congress people were away. Back then, they didn't fly home. They had to go home earlier to, to get home. And uh, this book here, The Creature from Jekyll Island, is the one you need to read to find out about that, how they created the Federal Reserve uh, and then you, you come back to, uh, or you come forward, I'm sorry, to 1978 and the Full Employment and Balanced Growth Act uh, or the Humphrey Hawkins Act. Uh, it says this amendment to the Employment Act of 1946 was signed in October 27th, 1978 by President Jimmy Carter, establishing new goals for the nation's economic policymakers. So this is from the uh, federalreservehistory.org uh, website. So it says here, in 1977, the Federal Reserve Act was amended uh, to instruct the Fed to pursue three goals, stable prices, maximum employment, and moderate long-term interest rates, though the last of those three objectives is rarely mentioned now in policy discussions, and, and the Fed is widely viewed as having only a dual mandate. So what's gonna happen now? And of course, the problem with the, the Federal Reserve, Wall Street, the Treasury government, is that they use a lot of deception, they use a lot of tricks to make sure that this doesn't come out to discredit people like me and others who try to expose the Federal Reserve. So yes, they might find a way to keep things going. Um, I, I, I'm not uh, saying that this is gonna happen uh, definitively, but uh, hopefully it will. They will shoot themselves in the foot. And what do I mean by that? Well. By unwinding their balance sheet, I don't know for how many months they're gonna do it, 95 billion a month. I mean, if they they do it for 10 months, that's just under a trillion, get the balance sheet down to just under eight trillion. It's still a, a huge balance sheet. But what will happen when, when they do that, it creates a supply of treasuries in the market. It forces prices lower and it raises interest rates. We saw the other day that uh, the mortgage rate, the 30-year mortgage rate in the US went above 5% for the first time in 2011. So it affects the whole credit market. And uh, seeing that the modern economy in the US and Western Europe are credit-based and people <laughs> have to service their debt, their mortgages, credit cards, car finance, everything else, governments as well, of course, they're up to here in debt. 
it, it will mean a, a rise in servicing those uh, debts. And what that will do is going to raise the cost of living ev even more. So yes, they're trying to pair in the inflation that they created themselves. And uh, also the financial markets, stock markets, bond markets. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the prices of uh, all uh, financial securities are determined by the discount rate. And the discount rate, of course, is a derivative of the policy rate set by the Fed. And it's also a reflection of the 10 year yield or the 30 year yield as well. And the higher these go, uh, the lower the value of all securities uh, becomes, the wealth effect drops, and, and that's what the Fed wants to do. But seeing that <laughs> the Fed's dual mandate is to maintain stable prices, maximum employment, and moderate long-term interest rates, they will have a problem. They could have a problem politically because um, the Fed thought in 2008 when they embarked on this experiment of QE, <laughs> thank you very much, Ben Bernanke, uh, they thought uh, they could do it. They didn't look back at the Germans in the early 1920s at uh, Rudolf von Havenstein, who was the uh, president of the Reichsbank, <laughs> And see that it doesn't work. They thought, oh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, you know, we're much cleverer. We have PhDs. <laughs> Even Ben Bernanke said, well, in an interview, I think it was 60 Minutes, uh, the reporter asked him, what if uh, inflation starts rising? And he said, oh, we can raise rates in 15 minutes. There's no problem. And, and uh, I think also when they're starting QE, um, uh, someone in Congress asked him when he was testifying and the balance sheet at the time was below a, a trillion. And uh, this guy, uh, this Congress person asked, oh, w what if you create another trillion? Uh, you know, isn't that a problem? He said, oh, that's no problem. We can just unwind that trillion. And here we are now. <laughs> we, we are almost up to uh, 10 trillion and they think it's going to be easy. No, um, I, I think they're going to find that the hard way. And that's why I'm optimistic. Why would I be optimistic? Well, because, like I said, they, they could shoot themselves in the foot. Of course, they have a lot of nefarious ways of doing things and hiding things and manipulating things. And they're going to do their utmost to, to do that. But, uh, yeah, my hope is that uh, <laughs> they're going to, you know, face the music. And I think that would be the best way to get rid of the Federal Reserve, to end the Fed. Um, it will be hopefully because of their own hubris. And uh, yes, <laughs> this uh, policy of creating trillions uh, of fake currency out of thin air or reserves, if you want to call it, they didn't think it would uh, have any consequences? Well, the consequence is here now. It's all uh, the rising prices, um, the wealth inequality. <laughs> it's a mess, right? So with that, I'm going to recommend a few other books. Yeah, there's this one here, of course, The Creature from Jack Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin. It's one of the classic ones about the Federal Reserve. But I would say that G. Edward Griffin was not the first uh, individual to expose the Federal Reserve, but uh, one of them, one of the pioneers was Eustace Mullins, uh, The Secrets of the Federal Reserve. He was urged to look into the Federal Reserve. He was like a reporter in Washington, D.C., but he was urged to look into the central bank by Ezra Pound, the the poet. And... Uh, I highly recommend this if you can get it uh, by Eustace Mullins. Uh, of course, there's the classic uh, Ron Paul and the Fed. And by the way, if you go into my YouTube channel under videos and search Ron Paul, I've interviewed Ron Paul on this channel, I think a couple of years ago. So there's Ron Paul and the Fed. 
And uh, the last one is not really about the Fed, but it's about the, the people who control the Federal Reserve. And, and this was recommended uh, to me by Jim Sinclair of JS Mindset. He was considered Mr. Gold in the 70s. Jim Sinclair actually is from the Seligman family, which is part of our crowd. Uh, this is by Stephen Birmingham, uh, this book. And uh, the reason I recommend it is because it talks here about the Panic of 1837, just when uh, I think it was the Second Bank of the United States had been allowed to, its charter had been allowed to run out by President Jackson. So there was no central bank anymore in the US. And I think the bankers uh, created the panic, but it says here on page 40, and this is about August Belmont, one of the German bankers that went to the US as uh, an agent of the Rothschilds. So it says, in the panic of 1837, Belmont was able to perform a service which he would repeat in subsequent panics and which helped make him a friend to bankers and to the United States government. By negotiating large loans from the Rothschilds, he was able to shore up the United States debtor banks. In other words, he was able, thanks to the hugeness of the Rothschild reservoir of capital, to start out in America operating his own Federal Reserve System. So, in the beginning of this video, I talked about how the bankers on Wall Street, especially JP Morgan, and I would say JP Morgan is probably an agent of the Rothschilds as well. It, it, I know it sounds a little bit outlandish, but I, I think it was because JP Morgan Bank was actually founded in London. Um, so JP Morgan had the same problem. You had these panics, they had to bail out Wall Street with their reservoir of capital. They had to find a way of making sure that uh, they didn't privatize the losses, right? So they created the Federal Reserve. And it's interesting that in this book, it talks about uh, the fact that they were operating their own Federal Reserve system. But it was, uh, I mean, you could argue it's still private, but it didn't have the backstop from you, the taxpayer, and it does now. And that's why I wouldn't shed any tears if the Federal Reserve went away, if it was ended, if they really shot themselves in the foot. So you might be thinking, what do we do in this situation? Well, I think if you've been preparing for this kind of environment with precious metals, I think you're going to be fine. There's, of course, not just precious metals in life. There are other things that you need to be uh, in tune with spiritually and family wise and everything else. Health wise, of course, is very important. So there are going to be interesting uh, times, you know, coming up. There are going to be interesting times coming up, excuse me. And uh, it will be very interesting to see what happens uh, with this quantitative tightening, which is, uh, of course, the opposite of QE. Uh, Thorsten Paulite, who uh, is a German economist who I, I've interviewed as well on this channel, he writes a lot for the Mises Institute. He asked the question, or he tweeted out yesterday, CNBC reports the Fed will likely reduce its balance sheet by 95 billion per month beginning in May. I don't know, but somehow I got the feeling that this won't be done. <laughs> so he, he compared the, the movement in the stock market to, to the growth of the balance sheet. So as I said, it's going to be very interesting. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's quarter past 8 a.m. London time. We've got spot gold actually unchanged at 1925. Range has been 1930 to 1919. Uh, silver is down 12 cents or half a percent 
2432. Range has been 52 to 25. Stock markets pretty steady. The Dow futures down 11 points. The NASDAQ future uh, is up a quarter of a percent. Notice the NASDAQ had a bad day yesterday. It's still down about 11% year to date. S&P 500 is up four points. FTSE is up five points, 75.79. Euro stocks 50 is up uh, 23 points at 38.47. Uh, to the currencies, we got sterling up a quarter of a percent just above 131 of uh, the euro is up 0.15 of a percent at 109.10 the dollar is unchanged versus the japanese yen at 123.81 and the dollar is up slightly versus the u1 at 636.30 i'm just gonna have a quick look at the uh russian ruble and again, the Russian ruble uh, is testing the uh, 80 level. That seems to be a very imp important floor for the dollar there at 80. It will be interesting to see uh, if and when we break that level. Right now, we're right at that level. It's 80.28 bid at 81.50 offered. And the low has been 80.03. So... Um, Interesting that even Janet Yellen now is mentioning the ruble. The fact that she's mentioning the ruble, I think, is significant. To the other currencies, Aussie dollar is down a third, 74.89. The dollar is unchanged versus the loony or Canadian dollar, 125.44. And the Kiwi dollar is down 0.2 at 69.03. To the general commodities, uh, WTI crude, yeah, that got got hit back down below 100. Right now, WTI is up 1.3% at 97.05. Brent is up one and a quarter percent at 102.15. High grade copper is down a third of a percent at 472. And natural gas is up 1% at 613. So uh, a quick look at the uh, treasury market or the bond markets. Yields uh, went up quite a bit Tuesday and yesterday prior to the uh, announcement from the Federal Reserve. And now they've gone down quite a bit. And it might sound strange. You know, they announced that they're going to do quantitative tightening. They're going to be selling a lot of treasuries. The markets are going to have to while well, they're gonna demand a, a higher return, lower prices, because uh, the Fed's been a, a buyer of last resort, an artificial buyer. So why is why have yields gone down since the announcement? Well, it's the old uh, adage of buy the rumor, <laughs> or in this case is sell the rumor, buy the fact, sell the bonds and then buy the facts. Markets can sense that kind of stuff a lot of times, or there's, inside information. After all, the Federal Reserve and the bankers are tied at the hip. So right now, the 10-year yield is down four and a half basis points at 257. I think it got up to like almost 270. It was around 266. Uh, the two-year yield is down actually seven basis points at, at 243. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.